All right, welcome to the second lesson about emotions, gels, and foams, and how it applies to us in everyday life. To emotions, a colloid in which liquids that do not normally mix are spread throughout each other. So emulsifying is done by slowly adding one ingredient to another while simultaneously mixing. The this disperses and suspends tiny droplets of one liquid known as the dispersed phase through another known as the continuous phase. And in case you didn't know, a colloid is a mixture of very tiny particles that are dispersed in other substances but not but they don't settle out of that substance. Emulsions continue. To prevent the mixture from separating, emulsifier, which is attracted to both oil and water, are added, thus allowing the two to mix. An emulsifier functions by surrounding the oil droplets to form a protective coat which holds the oil droplets in suspension. One part of the emulsifier molecule, the polar end, is soluble in water and one part is insoluble, is soluble in the oil, the non-polar end. And on the right I have some pictures. So A, if you look at A, the orange part is the oil while the blue is obviously water and B is where it tends to disperse and so the droplets that you see is in the dispersed phase and um, the water is in the continuous phase and if you look at C hold on, C it's the molecules are rising to the top and if you look at D it shows you a better definition of what each molecule looks like and so the polar end is actually the outside and outside which is like the purple rings and the nonpolar end is um, the lines within the orange circle Okay. Emulsion example, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is an example of an oil and vinegar emulsion. The basic ingredients are large quantities of oil, small quantities of an acid like vinegar or lemon juice, and egg yolk, the emulsifier. Other ingredients may be added for flavor. Okay. Um, the egg, uh, egg yolk is added because it contains lec lecithin, a naturally occurring emulsifier. The lecithin functions by surrounding the oil droplets to form a protective coat which holds the oil droplets in suspension. One part of the lecithin molecule, the, molecule uh, the polar end, is soluble in water and one part is soluble in the oil, the non-polar end. Since lecithin is attracted to both the oil and the water, it prevents from the separating. It prevents them from separating. So if you look at the picture on the right, as you can see, the polar end is near the top of the, uh, where nitrogen and hydro oxygen connect and the nonpolar end is at the bottom where there's two other lines. Foams. A foam is a type of colloidal uh, dispersion in which very tiny particles of gas are dispersed or scattered in a liquid or solid substance and do not settle out of that substance. Examples include ice cream, whipped cream, foam milk, marshmallows, and beaten egg whites. A foam is made by agitating a liquid by beating or mixing, in which in turn traps air inside the liquid film. As air is trapped in the liquid, the dispersion increases in volume. This increase in volume is known as overrun. Uh, an example was an egg white foam. An egg white foam is the type of foam used in meringues, soffles, foamy and omelets, angel, fruit cake, and sponge cakes to make them light and porous or airy. An egg white foam is a colloid of bubbles of air surrounded by part of the egg with white protein that has been denatured during beating. Denaturation is the change of a protein's shape under stress. Gels. Gels are defined as more or less rigid colloidal systems. In the case of gels, solid particles are dispersed in the liquid and the solid particles form a network structure which traps the liquid and gives the gel shape. Uh, when you're preparing food, 
Gels are often formed by the proteins of eggs or flour and products such as pudding, batter, and dough. Gelatin, the type of protein found in the bone and skin to show of animals, also forms gels. Some types of carbohydrates such as alginate, starch, and pectin also form gels. So, alginate gels. Alginate is a type of polysaccharide that occurs naturally in all brown algae as a skeletal component of their cell walls. Alginate is used in food because it's a powerful thickening, stabilizing, and gel forming agent. Examples include ice cream, snacks, salad dressings, pudding, onion rings. Most alginate used in foods in the form of sodium alginate. In order to form a gel, sodium alginate needs to come in contact with divalent ions such as calcium. The calcium ions are able to cross-link the alginate polymers because they can form two bonds as opposed to monovalent ions such as sodium which can only form one bond. The longer the alginate is in contact with a cal calcium chloride solution, the more rigid the gel will become as more crosslinks are formed. Also, depending on the concentration of calcium ions, the gels are either thermoreversible, which means low concentrations, or not high concentrations. Alright, so that's it for lesson two, and uh, look for lesson three, additives and preservatives. Alright.